Hi, my name is Ben and I'm the for former CEO of a debt relief company. Today I wanted to provide an inside view of what debt relief is, the cost, the chance of lawsuit, credit score impact, and red flags you need to look out for in a debt relief firm. This video is full of information that other firms may not want you to know, but you really need to know to make the most informed decision. Let's get started. Welcome to the Ascend Finance channel where we take complex solutions such as debt relief and simplify them into human, simple, understandable language. To personalize your situation because your situation is unique, we built a free debt relief calculator that I included in the description below that provides the cost, duration, and shows you alternatives to compare your options to make the most informed decision. Now, there are many debt relief options such as debt settlement, bankruptcy, debt management. For the purpose of this video, we are going to cover debt settlement, which is also referred to as debt negotiation, debt relief, and debt consolidation programs. Debt relief can be a great option for those who face financial hard hardship. That said, there's a lot of things a debt relief uh, company won't tell you up front, including alternatives, pros and cons, and chances of law lawsuit likelihood. So I think it's super important that you know everything about debt relief before starting. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. First, we'll cover what is debt relief. Second, we're going to give you a real life example of a debt relief situation situation with a, someone named Jessica. Third, the debt relief process. Fourth, how much debt relief costs. Fifth, the pros and cons of debt relief. Sixth, debt relief red flags that you need to look out for from debt relief companies. Now you're probably looking at this video and thinking, how am I going to get through all of this content? I mean, the last thing I would want to do is listen to a video of myself speaking for over 10 minutes. So we included chapters below that can help you speed up and go to whichever relevant sp space you are. And before we begin, I also want to know, that, want you to know your situation is completely unique. My goal is to answer all your questions, but if you if I don't, I'd love it if you can comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if this video is helpful, I'd love it if you could subscribe to our videos as we produce a lot of other content on how to get out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster. And also liking this video is definitely motivating to me. So I want to jump right in. What exactly is debt relief? Before we do anything else, I want to define what debt relief is. Debt relief is when you're trying to negotiate a lower payment amount for what you currently owe. On a small scale, you can think of it like this. You owe someone $1,500 and cannot pay them. So you negotiate with them and say, look, I can't pay you, but I can pay you 750. Can we close this out? And they agree. And that is called a settlement, a debt relief settlement. Typically a professional or company is going to be hired to, to lower these payment amounts. And each of the payments depend on the situation that is in. But debt relief is really there for those that don't can't afford their debt. So like, let's say you're seeing that you're not going to be able to make your credit card payments next month. Debt relief is maybe an option then. Let's cover a few options of what type of debt is in a debt relief program. Most debt relief programs only accept unsecured debt. So think about credit cards, medical bills, potential utility bills, car notes and situ situations where they've been repossessed. The important thing to consider in all of these is that it's unsecured debt. Anything that's secured by collateral would not be included in a debt settlement program or debt relief program. Collateralized uh, loans are something that's backed by something. So car loans and house mortgages, if you default on those, you, if you default on your car loan, you're probably going to get it repossessed. So those aren't generally included in a debt relief program. With that in mind, let's go ahead and look at someone I worked with recently named Jessica. That's not her real name, but I wanted to present her some real information. So I changed her name. And the purpose of this story is to illustrate the importance of comparing all your options to debt relief. Jessica was enrolled in a debt relief program that had high fees and the debt relief company did not prioritize her accounts based on lawsuit likelihood. We will chat about about lawsuits later and the red flags you need to look out for. But I want you to know that that is very important in a debt relief program. So Jessica was in the debt relief program for about a year when she got sued by Discover. The problem was, was that the debt relief company didn't have any funds in her account at that time to settle the account. They had prioritized other debts that had a lower lawsuit likelihood. So in this case, most of the time it would go to default judgment that could change into wage garnishment. Jessica came to me and took one of our, our debt relief calculator and we were 
able to figure out a customized solution that was able to help her settle these debts at a much lower rate and much more effective. But let's talk about what Jessica could have done in that situation. Jessica could have found a debt relief company that prioritized high lawsuit likelihood and lower fees. Now, the debt relief company should know who sues and who doesn't sue in most situations. She could have chosen a company that would have settled that debt first before settling any of her other debt and then uh, focus on uh, you know debts that have a lower likelihood of lawsuit. Unfortunately, Jessica's story is not the only one. I've heard a lot of people get pushed into debt, debt relief when they could qualify for Chapter 7. Other situations happen where a person gets a, a, a letter where they think they are qualifying for a debt consolidation load only to be qualifying for a debt consolidation program. Those are definitely not the same and we're going to cover some of those later. Next, let's cover the debt relief process. The debt relief process can be a little bit intimidating at first. Generally, you're going to not pay on your uh, credits, credit cards for a while and, and your accounts are going to go behind. Those are going to go to default, which will basically mean that your creditors will be more likely to settle for a lower amount than you're owed. When you're not making the payments to your creditors, most debt relief companies are going to be acting as a go-between with your creditors. So it's important just to understand how that works and that they're going to be handling the calls. Next, the debt relief company is going to set up an escrow bank account that is going to be where all the funds are going to be sent and negotiated with from. It's going to be one payment every month for all your creditors. And this is why sometimes debt relief is considered consolidation because you're consolidating multiple creditors into one payment every month. The payment can actually save you quite a bit of money and it can be maybe 50% to 60% of what you're currently paying. And that is because they're trying to negotiate for a lower amount. The debt company, debt relief company will still try to make sure that whatever the cre creditor says they will accept. If you're not happy, you have to basically approve of all the debt settlements. And that is super important to understand. Once you agree on a debt settlement, the debt relief company will release your payment to creditors and make the payment settle generally in either a lump sum or a structured settlement in, in as many as 24 payments. Keep in mind that a debt relief company services that there is a possibility that all, may, all your debts are not going to be settled at once. It could be a few years before all your accounts are settled. So that's just something important to know. Next, let's cover the costs of debt relief. And this is one of the most important things to understand because most debt relief companies say there's no upfront fees. Well, that's true. You need to understand the costs. First, there are two main costs associated with debt relief. So make sure that you kind of understand what that cost is before you sign the dotted line. The first cost is a escrow account fee, and that's generally between seven and $15 per month. The second fee, which is the more important fee, is the debt relief company fees. Now, those fees can range from 15% to 25% of your enrolled debt. That's a big difference. 10% is a big difference. It can relate to thousands and thousands of dollars in additional fees if you choose 25% over 15%. And these fees are imperative. And one of the reasons that we only work with a few debt settlement companies that offer very much lower fees at the 15 to potentially 20% range. If the debt relief company you're, you're, you're looking at says that they're going to charge you fees before they settle a debt, consider looking elsewhere because that is an important thing that they only charge fees once this debt is first debt is settled. Next, let's cover the pros and cons of debt relief as there's a lot of things to consider here and it's really important that you understand them. First, the biggest pro that we're going to talk about is the savings. Even with the various fees that you're going to pay, you can save money with debt relief. You could pay as little as 50% of the debt that you're owed um, before fees and then after fees, you could be still saving 25 to 35% of the original debt amount. When you compare other options, such as Chapter 13 bankruptcy, you could you could potentially save quite a bit of money in this route. Second, payment flexibility is often greater in debt relief because if you can't make a payment, sometimes you can potentially hold off for a month, uh, you know, December for Christmas or something like that. In, in case there is in a debt settlement, you may have less flexibility, but there's a lot of usually a lot of payment flexibility there. Um, you don't necessarily get as much payment flexibility in some cases in Chapter 13 bankruptcy bankruptcy, but that's something else to consider. The next part that we're going to talk about is the amount of time it takes. In chapter 13 bankruptcy or for your above median, it could be a five-year plan. And in debt settlement and debt relief programs, you could be out of debt within within as little as 24 to 48 months, which is great when you're considering how much, uh, how long credit cards, if you make the payment, payment minimum payment could last 30 years. It's insane. But it's really important to note that, uh, that you will be able to get out of debt generally in a set period of time. Finally, debt relief is an alternative and a way to avoid bankruptcy. 
bankruptcy. Well, bankruptcy is a lot of people choose bankruptcy. Um, there is something uh, such as the public record that bankruptcy holds that people don't want to pursue. And debt relief allows you to basically not go that route. While these pros of debt relief are very good and definitely can help, let's talk about the cons because the cons are going to be really helpful for you to understand. First, debt relief can definitely impact your credit score because most debt relief companies are negotiate when your accounts are behind. So your credit score is going to most likely drop in your credit report too, or your credit report will show that information. While it is true that you, once you're finished paying, your credit score could go up, it's important to know what your credit score, credit score will look like. And we'll cover that in an, actually another video about credit score impact and debt settlement, debt relief. So just look out for that because that is going to be a really important video to watch. Basically, it somewhat depends on what your credit score starting point is to determine what your score is going to go down or up, down. Next, this is a pretty uh, significant one, but the chance of being sued. The process of debt relief entails you to intentionally miss payments so your creditors are more likely to settle a lower amount. In the meantime, while you're missing payments, your creditors may opt to file a lawsuit. This can generally happen further down the line, but it's important to know. And there are a number of indicator factors that indicate whether a creditor may sue you or not, but it really depends on the creditor. There are reports that could take years for the the, the person to sue, the, the company to sue, or some creditors don't sue at all. So the lawsuit likelihood is one of the most important things to understand. And our debt relief calculator and debt relief insights page helps you kind of determine what who your creditors are and what are the chances that you are going to be sued. Because that's really important to understand before you sign a debt, debt relief program and a lot of companies don't actually get into those type of details. Also, remember that late fees and interest payments can accrue generally until the account defaults or charges off. Now, this doesn't maybe equate to that much in the grand scheme of things, maybe 5% of your current balance, but it's still super important to understand and note um, before signing the dotted lines for a debt relief program. The next con is that the creditors may not work with you. In most cases, creditors will work with you or in many cases, um, the chances of them not working are very small. And debt relief companies should already know who doesn't work with you and who does. Uh, many of the, the companies that don't would be like cr credit unions, potentially a federal credit union would not settle debt. And that's important to understand before you join a program. Another con to consider is the potential tax burden that you may face for forgiven debt. Once you re reach a settlement, the creditor may send a, um, a, so a 1099-C to you for debt that's over $600. Now, what you need to know is that um, not everyone has to pay these taxes if you are tax insolvent as the IRS specifies. You may not be, have to pay these. Now, I'm gonna include a link in the description below that kind of shares the information about tax insolvent and it helps you estimate whether you may be tax insolvent. Basically, if your liabilities are greater than your assets, you may not owe the debt, the the, um, the taxes. If your assets are greater than your liabilities, you may owe the taxes. Um, the, we're, we aren't accountants, so it's definitely best to, con to consider reaching out to someone else that is an accountant, but that is sort of a gist and, and, a, and a baseline understanding. The last con that we're gonna talk about is debt settlement may be more expensive than Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Now, it can be a lot cheaper than Chapter 13 bankruptcy, Bankruptcy. And our debt relief calculator actually goes into the different options and helps you understand the all in costs for each of these things. But it is important to understand that debt relief may be more expensive than Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Let's get into the debt relief red flags that you really need to look out for. There's eight of these that you need to look out for when choosing a debt relief company. First, look out for debt relief company that doesn't do a full analysis of your options. For example, let's say you qualify for Chapter 7 bankruptcy and it's a lot less expensive. What if they don't even, what if the debt relief company doesn't even make you aware that there are other, are other options? It's it's important to understand the other options. So hopefully the debt relief company that you're looking for does that. Second, a debt relief company that only has amazing reviews on biased review sites may be challenging. Now, little did, do most people know that there are debt, there are, there are ranking sites out there that debt relief and other types of companies will pay to be ranked and they get, they pay for leads from these sites. So it's important to find honest, unbiased reviews. Uh, and we think that Google and Yelp are generally good examples of more unbiased review sources. Next, pushy sales tactics. If a debt relief company is saying, you need to do this now, you need to do this now, this is your best option right now, may not be a good fit because you should take, in, in our opinion, you should take a lot of time to understand your options before making a decision. Another thing is upfront fees. If they're charging a bunch of upfront fees before they do any work, it may be something, a red flag to look out for. Another red flag is when a debt 
relief company pitches it as a debt relief consult as a debt consolidation loan. So you may get a letter in the mail about solving your debt through debt consolidation loan at a 3.99% interest rate. Well, maybe no one ever qualifies for that and everyone gets in their debt relief program. And, and this is something to really consider before you kind of sign the dotted lines with the debt relief companies, whether you should work with the company that does that. The other th con to consider and uh, red flag to consider is uh, when a debt relief company only mentions positive outcomes, like I showed you before, there are cons of debt relief. And it's important to understand those before, you know, deciding to do debt relief. So that's a, that's a really good con to consider, uh, red flag to consider. Another red flag to consider is when they don't give you the full picture of your potential savings and aren't clear on the fees you're going to pay. These are really important things to consider and, and you need to make the most informed decision with all the information you have available. So they need to be uh, upfront about potential savings. The other one, and this might be the biggest red flag to look out for is when they don't talk about the lawsuit likelihood or run your creditors through a lock, like lawsuit likelihood matrix. This is something that our one of our, our debt relief tool and debt relief insights can help do, but a debt relief company should know who's gonna sue before they, they sue it, you, 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 uh, you join. And so they should be very apparent with that information. The big question now is, should you do debt relief? Deciding to pursue debt relief is ultimately your decision and your situation is completely unique. Please add a comment below if you have any questions that I can answer or take the debt relief calculator that compares your insights to other options, the cost of debt relief, the duration specific to your zip code and information. I've also included a couple links in this video that can help you determine whether this is debt relief is a good option. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, we would definitely appreciate you clicking the like button at the below. And if you want other ideas on debt relief, bankruptcy, other options, feel free to, to subscribe as we come out with videos every week about help, how to help you get out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster.